Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to rig these baits, how, to, how I fish these baits, and give you a few tips that I've learned along the way that you can use, and hopefully, it'll help you put more fish in the boat. So let's get to it. Hey guys, it's Brian. And if you haven't already, go down and hit the subscribe the subscribe button and uh, turn on the notification bell. That way you know when I put out these videos, I'm trying to do them weekly. Uh, also, this video is a little long, so I'm gonna try to put timestamp links in the description as well. That way you can just click to see me, uh, how I rig the swim baits or how I fish the swim baits and also hook sets. Everybody loves the hook sets. So those links are down in the description. So let's go. All right, so like I said, um, I'm gonna teach you how I rig them and how uh, how I rig the two uh, swim baits. I'm only gonna show you two styles. I'm gonna show you how to rig them jig head and how to rig a underbelly weighted swim jig and how to fish them. But I don't want you to get discouraged. I might make a, 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 media, a video later if this one does pretty good because I know that there are so many different ways to rig these and fish these. I mean, I got I got them on a buzz bait, you know. That's that's a driftwood customs, uh, driftwood baits custom uh, buzz bait with his swim bait on it. Um, the A rig, I mean, that's three inch Scottsboro tackles on an A rig. It's, you know, craziness. Um, I like to throw, especially winter time, this right here, it's a three inch on a ball head. Guys, this right here, it's kind of like a square bill. You run that around some rocks and it will deflect and they'll just chomp on it. Gotta love it. This one is great, especially uh, winter time and um, early, winter, early spring, you know, when you're around the small mouth and stuff. And spots they really like this um oh here's another one here's a three inch on a ledge head uh lures i think i want to say micro tennessee bling i like this one um it's an underspan i got other underspans here's a here's a bigger underspan um but i like to reel this and get it down deep for small mouth up where i catch small mouth and what i do is i like to get this this blade to tick off the rocks and they'll just engulf it. Really love this, this one. Uh, but I, before I get crazy, like you can just go on and on about the different ways to rig these and to fish these, but I want to keep it kind of simple on this how to, um, uh, kind of like a one one This is swim baits one one right? I want to teach you basics, how to, how to, how to rig them and how to, uh, Rig, rig them two different two different styles and the way to fish these and then if this video uh gets a lot of likes and stuff i'll come back with a you know a 202 or a you know a more advanced version but we're gonna keep it simple first when you get good at the simple stuff then you move on up so uh, with all that said let me get right into rigging these uh, swim baits and then we'll talk then we'll go into how I fish them and then I got some fish catches I'm gonna put in and then um, I'll talk about it a little bit more and then you know at any time down below in the description I've got links to all these um, if I can find some discount codes I'll put them down there too I know um, there's a pretty good discount code for the True Bass Swim Baits right now going on. So I'll put it down below as well. But right now, let's go rig them. All right, so let's talk about putting a swim bait on a jig, a jig head. Um, first, I'm going to show you how I put them on. This is a True Bass Swim Bait. Uh, it's hollow body. Hollow body and how I do it. So first thing I do 
is I'm gonna lay the swim bait beside the head like it's gonna go up against the head. Let's see, like so. And I'm gonna mark where it, the hook comes out. So it come, it's gonna come out right there. So I'm gonna take the hook point and I'm going to basically mark the back of this swim bait where it's where the hook's gonna penetrate. So, so that's step one. Step two, we're gonna insert the hook into it. Now you don't want the hook, once it goes through this head, it's hollow. So you don't want it digging into plastic. You want it to be very, you know, easy to push up. So we're gonna push it up. Make sure your hook's, you know, free. And when you get to where the hook's going to come out, so the hook's going to come out right there. Let's see if you can see. You know what? I'm going to take a marker I have right here. I'm going to mark this swim bait so you see where I marked it. So I'm marked with my hook point. I marked that swim bait right there. So if that shows up. That's where the hook's going to come out. So now, put the swim bait over. I'm going to the, pull the hook out in that spot. All right, so that was step two. Step three, we're going to screw this uh, swim bait up on the head. So what you're going to do is gonna grab the head, all right? and I'm going to twist the swim bait up on the head. Bring the tail around, twist, bring the tail around, twist, bring the tail around. Um, that might have been too much. We're going to take it back. And I do that sometimes. I'm too much. But what you want to make sure you do, no matter what, is that hook, that swim bait, needs to be dead straight, right? The hook needs to come straight out of the swim bait. The swim bait needs to sit. It shouldn't have any kinks in it. And that's going to make it swim perfectly. This is, and what's great about these, I love the screw locks because they don't pull off, and you don't have to use any kind of um, super glue, you know. And this here, right here, as long as you don't, and I've messed them up before, like digging them out of stripe mouths, striper's mouth. But as long as you don't do this, I've caught 20 fish on one swim bait before. And I know that I've seen Ryan, who owns this company, fish them, and he's caught hun, you know, bunch on, on one swim bait. So as long as you're not doing anything, you can, these will really last a long time. All right, so there's the true bass. I'm going to reach over here and it's basically the same thing with a um, this this style and this is a Scott's Real Tackle um, so same thing I'm going to lay it here and I'm going to find out where it's going to come out of the head you know the hook's going to come out of the body basically I'm going to mark it with the hook but to make sure you guys can see again, I'm gonna mark it with with that dry erase marker. And that way you can see exactly where I marked it to come out. All right. So one of the tips that I've learned is you can take this, I ain't got no pliers, but you can take this uh, spring and spread it open and it'll actually hold these Scotch Pearl tackles a little bit better. Another thing, so you're going to put it in. What I, a lot of times, what I do is I'll bite this part off or take my scissors and cut it off. Since I ain't got no scissors, I'm going to bite it off right now. And I'm going to take and I'm going to insert the jig head. I'm going to try to keep it as straight as possible. Just like I said, this has got to be straight. They won't swim right if they're not straight. Now 
Now, cool thing about a Scottsboro, it's actually got a hollow section right here. And that comes in handy in one of my tips later. I'm going to push it up. Push it up. There we go. Now, again, I'm going to come right out, right there where I marked it. That hook's going to come right out. And what I should get, now, now I'm down here. I'm going to have to do the whole screw it on again. see that bad boy straight she'll swim she'll swim wow that's how you rig them on a jig head next I'm gonna go over how I rig them on a um, the underbelly hooks all right guys so for the uh, belly weighted hooks weedless hooks so there's three different ones that I like to throw. First, this one is an owner's beast hook. Um, I can't tell you what size it is, but I just know it works for the ones that I got with me. Um, I really like this one. Another one I like to throw is this one. It's a tungsten, um, I wanna say, I, I wanna say, I can't really tell you where I got this one, but I've had it for a while. I got a bunch of them. A bunch of different sizes. I really like this one when I'm throwing the smaller swim baits, uh, the four and a halfs. They seem to really work. This is actually a big. This is a seven out. I've never really tried the the five and a half inch swim baits on it, but I'm sure it'll work. That little that just gives a little bit more flash and you know a little bit more vibration when you're coming through the water. I throw it around grass. I throw all these around grass. This is what I use around grass. And this one is a Driftwoods Custom. Uh, he calls them I want to say a S6 or whatever but what's cool about this one is I'll just set it up here the weight is really towards the front of the, of the bait kind of like this I'm, just, I'm not going to put it in but it's up there so then when you know you're fishing it and if you stop it, the bait's going to sit like this. So that swim bait is actually looking like it's, you know, feeding off the bottom. And you can kind of hop it like a jig that way. Um, I've caught some good ones on it. I know a lot of people that catch a lot of good ones on this. Um, and I'm going to put links to where you can get this stuff in the description, like I've said. But that's a pretty cool one that most people aren't fishing and it gives you something different so you might want to give old driftwood custom swim baits a try because it's a little different sometimes a little different it'll get you a bit all right so let's talk about rigging these belly weight hooks so like i said this is just the owner um you'll see the pin right there i stick the pin straight through right smack dab in the middle of the swim bait because like I've said before it's got to be straighter it's not going to work right and then just kind of constant pressure and screw it on up on the up on the keeper there we go Looking pretty good so and again we're going to lay that hook where you can see where it's going to come out. And what I'm going to do, same thing. I'm just going to mark it for you guys so you'll know that I know that it's going to come out right there. If you can see that little mark. There we go. See that mark? That's where that hook's going to come out. All right. So let me... you're going to 
and try it. Do your best to make sure you get it straight in the bottom of these baits. And it's not going to be easy. I'm going to tell you the first, you might mess up a couple. You first doing it. All right, we got it in the bottom. Now I'm going to come right out that, that top. And the good thing about these, most of them, like especially these uh, tree bass, you can't really see it, but there's a line that goes right down the bottom. I guess that's where they pour it. And I'm going to come, I'm going to make sure I bring that hook right out that line. Right on that spot that I had it, right? All right. So there we go. So, my tips, or the tips that I do, is I'm going to take a knife, and I'll show you on this one, and I'm going to slit that belly open. And I'm not going to go all the way, but I'm going to give it enough that when you set the hook on these on a fish, it's got plenty of, you know, that hook's got plenty of uh, way that it can slide down. And what will happen is you won't tear up as many swim baits by cutting that little hole in them. <clears throat> so if you, you can see the difference. I know it's a different hook, but if a fish bought, bit this and goes down, that hook's going to be able to slide down. And I, you'll, cut, you'll bring them in, and that hook will be like I brought these in, and this weight's out the top. But it slides down through there, and it's easy to come out you know, penetrate with that slit in the belly. That's how I really like to like them, or really like to have it open. Because it gives that fish more, I can get, I feel like I can get a better bite when that fish, instead of it being solid like right now, it'll slide, but it's not gonna slide too well. And you know, it's gonna hit that weight. And that's, that's the hook gap I got. Where when I cut this, I'll get a, I'll get, I've got more I've got the same amount of hook gap with that as I do with this smaller hook as I do that right now because I've slit that that belly because it'll slide all the way down there this one you know it'll stop now you slit that belly and it'll slide really well so also another thing I'm not going to text pose this hook that hooks gonna sit right up against the belly that was something that I learned from Ryan Salzman because you don't want to it'll rip this bait up but mostly because that that hook you know it's exposed a little bit but it'll catch grass every once in a while because you're throwing this in the grass and when you it catches that grass and you rip it free sometimes you'll get that bite I mean it's just like a, a rattle trap you rip it free and they'll react and hit it and it's easier to get a hook in them that way so that's a good tip for these, uh, I'm gonna rig the Scott Spurl tackle. It's gonna be the basically the same way, except this belly, I'm gonna open up the same, right? I'm gonna take my fingers, and this one I can just rip open. I don't have to have a knife or anything. But <clears throat> same thing, I'm gonna stick the hook in the right dead center in the middle, or the pin, and I'm gonna start Start it up on here. You know, I'm going to kind of keep good pressure on it. Make sure I got it all nice and centered up. Well, now, again, take. Usually, I'll take a hook. I'll take the hook and mark right there where it's going to come out. Top dead center. Like I said, just so you guys can see it, I'm going to mark it with a scissor here marker. Now you can see that. That one you can see pretty well. That's where the hook's going to come out on this one. And because this belly's already open, it makes it a whole lot easier. There you go. And again, 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put that hook I'm not gonna text pose that hook that hooks gonna stay just like that so if you text pose it basically you're gonna come and put it like that eh, you can mess up a bait that way leave it like this now this is, I'm gonna be able to show you better now fish bites you know fish bites boom this bad boy is gonna slide down all the way you see the that's a gap right there that's that that right there will hook them every time and you get a good hook set in them and that's how you do it boys let me make sure I got a good shot of that because I, I don't know if I did I didn't look at my, my little screen to make sure I got a good shot but you see with that slit in that belly and that's this right here is the main reason that I slit the belly on these uh, tree basses because I get such a big gap when I slit that belly so let's put it back like it goes and again every time you do this you want to make sure she's nice and straight because if she ain't straight she ain't swimming right and that's how you uh, fish them on the belly hook right there um, one another good tip for these belly hooks is when fish they're gonna come up and they're gonna hit it and if you swing right away you're gonna lose a lot of fish so what you're gonna do is this is another tip that I've learned from listening to guides and podcasts and you know blogs and I actually went out and tried it myself and seemed to get better hookups so when you're gonna hit it do like you do a frog when they hit that frog you give it a couple of seconds and then and then slam it home and you know you'll hook them and get them in but I, I'll tell you I lose way more fish on this fishing this way than I do on a jig on the jig head but this right here will go through grass beautifully especially fishing those humps and those points and stuff the points of grass this right here is the bomb this here is actually my favorite color too payback so all right so now that you saw how I rig the different you know belly hook versus a jig uh, jig head style I'm gonna talk about how I fish swim baits so there's you know there's all kinds of different things I fish them over rocks um, in current out of current over grass but a couple things stay the same no matter what first the retrieve okay I'm gonna make my long cast I'm gonna throw it out there as far as I can throw it and then I'm gonna uh, wind it back in and what you want to do is you want to be a robot you're literally just going to take and you know just slowly reel it in I mean you're just gonna say the same speed you're not gonna change up your speed you're gonna say the same speed. I kind of like to tick or just stay right above whatever I'm fishing. If I'm fishing rocks, I'm gonna stay right, a, right above the rocks. So if I feel that I hit a rock, then I'm gonna speed up a little bit. If I feel I get into the grass, then I'm gonna speed up just a tad. But what, what you're gonna see is I always stay the same, right? I'm always, it's just a steady reel. It's not, you know, I'm just steady reeling. I'm not burning it, I'm not jerking. I'm just going to stay a steady speed, you know, and what I do is I, there's going to be a bow in your line and I watch the bow and I didn't understand it when, <clears throat> when I went on the guide trip with Ryan and he was talking about the bow in your line. But once you get it, you understand that bow is telling you that you're at the right speed at the right depth and you're in the magic is, is all I can say is because that's, if I'm seeing that bow just right, I know I can get, I'm going to get bit no no matter what so that's one thing all right rod <clears throat> rod placement so i'm gonna i'm gonna put some video after right after this and i want you to do is watch my rod watch my rod tip and watch my hands you can see that i'm just steady reeling so what i'm what i'm going to show you now is my rod when i cast out and i'm reeling in my rod is either always either going to be at the nine o'clock position, uh, ten o'clock position, 
sometimes the eight o'clock position, but most of the time it's going to be nine to ten. I'm, you know, it's going to be straight. I'm going to be parallel with the water. I'm going to be angled just above, you know, just up. That's how. That's all you need to do. You don't. I'm going to show you what I learned from again listening to the guides, listening to uh, the people that know how to fish this stuff. This is why you do. You hold it like that. All right, let me grab one of these. So, throw this. This is the, again, the true bass. So you're throwing this out and you're reeling it in. When your rod is parallel with the, with the water, your bait is gonna swim just like this. He's gonna swim parallel. And you raise it, when you have your rod up, all right? Say we're gonna put it in the 10 o'clock position. This bait is gonna to tend to, to be kind of nose up, which is great for when you're fishing around rocks because you don't wanna have the rod down and you're fishing in rocks and it's because this bait will nose down and it'll start grinding in the rocks and that's how you get hung. So especially when you're fishing around rocks, always raise your tip of your rod up so it's up and that <clears throat> swim bait the head's gonna be up just a little bit and it's gonna come across. It's gonna it's gonna hit this is gonna hit the rocks and come over them. Right? Like I said before. Uh we're gonna keep steady, right? Steady reeling. And when you hit that rock, speed up just a little bit, and that, that swim bait is just gonna come right above that rocks. That's that's key with these, especially when you're below the dams. Right there is when you're below the dams and that's right above those rocks, staying right up out of that current boom you're gonna get hit and you're gonna have a good one. nine times out of ten you're gonna have a good one. so again <clears throat> this is your rod parallel holding it out you you're parallel to the water your swim baits gonna swim flat you point down your swim baits gonna nose down you point it up a little bit your swim baits gonna be nose up a little bit that's on all of them so just keep that in mind when you're fishing. All right. So right now I got some uh, footage that I filmed um, throwing the jig head and throwing a belly weight. I'm going to deploy that footage. And then I, what I want you to look for, watch my rod. Watch the tip of my rod, especially. You'll see I get a bite, but I don't always set the hook right away. I'll get the bite and I'll reel down and fill him and then I hit home. So that's a key too. Feel your fish. Don't just feel the bump and set back. Feel your fish. Let him load up and then hit him. That's key, especially like like I said, when you're throwing that belly weight, that's what you want to feel. You're gonna feel him. He's gonna hit it, and then you're gonna give him a second. Give him a second or two. Let him suck that bait down, especially when they get these big ones. You start throwing big ones. You're gonna hit it. Now you want him to suck it down, and now you're gonna hook him. So, so watch my, watch my, um, watch my tip of my rod. <clears throat> and sh you'll see me holding my tip up or holding it straight. Watch my hands, how steady of a retrieve it is. And then watch that rod tip. And I'm probably going to, I'm going to try to put like circles or something to show you when I get the bite, I feel the bite. And then uh, that way you'll see, oh, I got the bite there, but I don't set the hook immediately. I reel down and then hit him because I felt him, felt him hit it. Now I'm waiting for him to, to get it good and then I'm going to hit him. So watch the footage. Uh, I think it's three fish catches and then we'll be back.
All right, guys, you just saw three fish catches using swim baits. One was swim bait on a jig head, and two were swim swim baits on a um, belly weighted uh, swim bait hook, <clears throat> beast hook, the owner beast hook. Um, you're gonna see the first fish was a spotted bass on a long point. Um, I've actually posted another video, social distancing or swim bait fishing, you be the judge. If you haven't seen it already, you need to go check it out. That's, uh, that that fish catch that I just showed you was in the same exact spot where I caught a bunch of other spots on that uh, on that long point. There are always three pound spots there. Uh, the other two fish are, like I said, on the swim bait with the belly, with the belly hook on it. Um, and I've actually used a tip that I let you guys know about to give it a second, kind of like a frog. That tip, I've used it in the last month and has actually helped me catch way more fish on the belly weight than normal. Um, I, where I usually, you know, my hooked land ratio was 70%, it's right now at 95%. I haven't really lost maybe one fish the whole time and I've caught some really good fish. Um, I'm, ca ca you know, I'm basically fishing humps with grass on them, you know, uh, top of them being three to four foot deep and then dropping off into 11, 12 foot of water. So that's how those fish have been caught. Um, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm glad you guys have stuck around. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you haven't already and you really like the video, give me a subscribe, hit the like button, you know, and if you really like hook sets, how to's and reviews, more is coming at you. So hit the notification bell and you'll know when I'm putting them out. I'm, I'm hoping to put out like one a week, maybe. Uh, don't know if that's gonna happen. We'll just see how everything happens when we go back to working in the office. But for right now, that's how it's gonna be. And uh, for these weird times, guys, stay safe, tight lines, and we'll see you on the water.